if you listen really closely, you can hear my daughter crying. And the reason she's crying is because of 49ers wide receiver Brandon Ayuk's list that we're going to go over shortly. But before we do, make sure you leave a like on the video. Click that thumbs up button. It takes less than half a second. And also subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on because I don't want you missing a single video, not one single update, nothing. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Let's get into it, even though I ain't appreciate Brandon Ayuk's list. And what list are we talking about? Well, Brandon Ayuk, he has been moving in a very unique way recently. Well, I guess it can't be too unique because this happens a lot of time, especially at the receiver position, when a player is just ready to get paid, they start trying it. They start pushing all kinds of buttons. They start being very, very outspoken. But Brandon Ayuk, we've seen it. We saw him pulling up to the 49ers facility. He's saying, this my stuff, this my stuff. And that's, of course, the clean version. But he had on that Pittsburgh Pirates hat. We've seen him on FaceTime a countless amount of time uh, with Jaden Daniels, Washington Commanders rookie quarterback. He's saying the 49ers all day. They don't want me back and then we of course heard every single trade room about Brandon Ayuk uh, but nothing has come to fruition as of yet but what's gonna go down with him well like I said we've heard rumors from a lot of different people from a lot of different sources from a lot of different reporters from a lot of different this and that but it's always nice when you can hear it directly from the person who it's about apparently last week Brandon Ayuk he had a face-to-face -face meeting with the 49ers and according to reports it went good what was said at that meeting? Hey, who knows? But it they talked about everything. They put everything out there on the table. And on the pivot, which Brandon Ayuk was a part of recently, he had this to say about his, uh, his job this season and where he could possibly be playing at this season. Uh, first, he said that he anticipates being with the 49ers this year. Uh, and the, his direct quote from him, he said, I feel like right now I'm in the right place, that being San Francisco, uh, in the right spot being a 49ers wide receiver and they're using him to the best of his ability uh with the right quarterback he's saying Brock Purdy can play some ball which he can except against the Ravens uh right now but we're not on the right term so just again he said I feel like right now I'm in the right place in the right spot with the right quarterback right now but we're not on the right term so straight up he's saying he wants his money he wants his bread but he was also asked on that same episode of the pivot like all right well what uniform do you think you'll be wearing this year in 2024 who you, who you think you're gonna be playing for well his answer to that this is the list that we were talking about he said probably a niner uniform okay i mean i can see why he would say that but then he said if not a niner uniform all right here we go uh probably a washington commander uniform okay so they write they write down the street from the ravens maybe he might feel like he go down the beltway or something and then but then he said if not a washington commander uniform probably a steelers uniform i was like uh well i mean I wanted the Ravens to get him. I mean, I still wouldn't mind if the Ravens got him. God, I've been wanting them to really shake it up at wide receiver even more this offseason. But this pretty much um, this pretty much kills that officially. Even though, I mean, it wasn't nothing hot with him and the Ravens. There wasn't nothing going on or anything like that. But this pretty much lets it be known like, yeah, it definitely ain't happening. I mean, Ravens ain't really got much money. Even though they could, if they really wanted to make it happen, they could. But Brandon Ayuk listed those teams and did not include the Baltimore Ravens on that list um but why why would he not include the Ravens on a list of teams that he expect to play for well I think just being realistic I mean it's not an expectation that they would want to or that that they would trade for a Brandon Ayuk not that they wouldn't want to but they would have to give up a lot uh to acquire him a receiver a young receiver that's entering his prime and somebody that's put up some significant numbers over the past couple of years and somebody who he can get that job done and he's like that and he's coming up on his first contract and these receivers they getting paid like 28 27 30 million dollars now so yeah. <laughs> you know raven there the guys are looking at all that he said, oh you know what uh, we straight man we're gonna go somewhere else when it comes to the wide receiver we're gonna stay with what we got uh but it's all good but can you imagine like brandon Ayuk? In the Baltimore Ravens offense. I know we, we ain't going to see it. There's a possibility we may see him at least two times a year if he ends up going with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But again, only time will tell. But he could have been playing with a two-time MVP. He could have been playing with a future Hall of Famer 
at the quarterback position. And us mentioning Lamar Jackson as a possible Hall of Famer, it was not a coincidence at all. Because this next question from my guy Oreo Cookie, he talks about Lamar Jackson's Hall of Fame status. Let's hear what he had to say. He said, hello, Engraven. Hope you're having a good summer. And congrats on the baby. Hey, I appreciate you, my friend. He said, I, I wanted to ask if you think Lamar Jackson is a first ballot Hall of Famer already or you, like me, and think he needs a Super Bowl for that to be the case. Now, um... I used to be like you because before when people would talk about and this was obviously recently because the season just ended a couple months ago. But when people would talk about, oh, yeah, Lamar Jackson, he definitely he already a Hall of Fame. I'd be like, mm, how? Like, he ain't got no Super Bowl ring yet. It's coming, but he ain't got it yet. And like, no, nah, he only been playing since 2018. Like, how can he Hall of Fame? Mm, I don't know about all that, my friend. And I'd get it. He'd be breaking records every single week. Every other week, it's a new record for Lamar Jackson. But I was like, uh, Hall of Fame, I don't know about that yet. Re really good play. Really great player, obviously. But I don't know about that. But then they were like um, the MVPs. But those MVPs, those are that's nothing to uh to 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 to, to bat an eye to. That's nothing to turn away from. And I was thinking, okay, but how? And then I thought about it. I was like, okay, his MVPs, he got two in his short career. Sure, he only been playing since 2018. He not only got one, but got two MVPs. And on top of that, if it wasn't for that one Bills fan who was voting, then he would have had two unanimous MVPs, like literally. T t taking all the votes He got 99 For the two MVPs combined He got 99 out of 100 votes That's amazing But obviously We see Lamar Jackson's play And we say Okay we, it is amazing So it makes sense But um, The part about The multiple MVPs I looked at that list Of people And I was like Oh Okay then I, I, I get it the, then let's, I'll read it off to you and, I, and I'll pull it up on the screen too So you can look at it for yourself But uh, people with multiple MVPs. Peyton Manning, he got five of them. That is crazy. That's insane. Aaron Rodgers, he got four. Tom Brady with three. Jim Brown, Brett Favre, Johnny Unitas with three. And with two, Lamar, Mahomes, Montana, Kurt Warner, Steve Young. Like, that's that's some serious uh, that's some serious company to be in right there, man. It it, it really is. And I know like Lamar Jackson being a Hall of Famer wouldn't be based on those other guys. It would be based off of his own accomplishments. But uh, when you think about it, what is a Hall of Famer? Somebody who was one of the best at their position, at their job, at their craft in the NFL uh, for a good amount of years. And for Lamar Jackson, it's like obviously he he missed the end of those two years with injury. Um we're going to talk about that another time. But he missed the end of those two years with injury. But uh, when you look at the seasons that he did finish, obviously 2018, that was his rookie year, finished that one. But 2019, he ended up getting MVP. 2020, he was in talks as an MVP candidate. 2021, he got hurt. 2022, he got hurt. Then 2023, boom, finished the season, and he wins another MVP. So it's like the trajectory of his career is already amazing as as is. But if he just continues to do what he's been doing, playing his game, playing his style, then yeah. And I think even based off of everything that he's already accomplished, he's still got a lot more to accomplish. Again, the the next thing is the ring. That's that's the next this next thing he gotta do is get the ring. Um, but I do think now you said first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't know. Hall of Famer, yes, first ballot. Two MVPs and just, again, the level of play. As long as it remains consistent. If it remains consistent, then I will say, yeah, for sure. And he also said, update on his weight loss. He said, I'm now down 146 pounds. And I'm below 200 pounds for the first time in 10 years. Still got more work to do, though. Bye for now. Man, we proud of you, man. For real. Seriously, we, 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 we proud of you, man. This is great, man. For you, because that, like, again, losing like 10 pounds, that takes a lot. That takes a whole lot. And it's so easy to put the, the weight right back on like that. But for you, you lost down 146 pounds. That's a lot, man. That's great. So uh, you got to let us know what your secret is. Now, a uh, not so secret about Ravens offense. This next question came from my guy, John. He said, first and foremost, congrats on the new addition. That's major. 
Appreciate you, John. Thank you, my friend. He said, now to the meat and potatoes. Well, that sounds really good, actually. Uh, last year, Lamar under Todd Munger's offense took more under center snaps than ever in his career. And yes, I was so grateful for that because we've been waiting for that because that opens up the offense so much more. Keep incorporating that stuff, the snaps under center, because it adds another element and another layer to the Baltimore Ravens offense that just had not been there for years. But anyway, continuing. He said, this is not a shot at any running back that we have had prior, but... With the addition of Derrick Henry, we have a running back whose name brings fear to other teams' defensive coordinators. That's very true. And like you said, it ain't a shot at nobody else. It ain't a shot at Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, Mark Ingram, Justice Hill. Now, Keaton Mitchell recently. Now, hey, all those guys made plays for the Ravens now. Don't sleep. All them guys made plays for the Ravens for sure. Uh, Keaton Mitchell was one, I, I think for sure, he would, he's somebody that brought fear to defensive coordinators. After that first game, even just, even if they were like, you know what, that first game was a fluke. After the second game, too, they were like, hold up now. That number 34 for them Ravens, hold up now. Watch him. But anyway, continuing. He said, with Lamar under center, this allows for a traditional play action that we have not really seen Lamar do in his career. Ooh, that's a good point. Again, it opens it up. Because he done the play action from the shotgun and whatnot. He done it from single back and whatnot. But to incorporate play action more from under center, again, layers, more layers. Uh, he said, uh, my question is now, do you think RPOs will increase because of Derrick Henry? Or will we have more play action to involve the wide receivers more? Or do you think we'll have a little mixture of both? Definitely a mixture of both. Because with the RPOs, you could put it in Derrick Henry's chest. And teams are going to be like, all right, we, we got to watch for Derrick Henry. But then Lamar could keep it. Team still, we got to watch for Lamar. So they, they got, and, and then if Lamar could keep it, he could run with it or he could keep it and throw it. So they got, they got so much to deal with. Like adding Derrick Henry, like you said, it adds somebody who defensive coordinators and defensive players, they respect that much more. So when you add him to the mix with everything that the Baltimore Ravens offense can do already, and now you add a Derrick Henry, one of the best and most consistent running backs in the league to everything that you do already, oof. Makes it that much more dangerous, man. Uh, and he said, Will this offense under Todd Monk can grow even more? It should, especially when you ask somebody like that. I feel like it has no choice but to. Uh, and he said, uh, Imagine a play action where teams are focused on Derrick Henry and focused on Lamar to not realize Tez Walker has taken the top off, or we all know how Mark Andrews always finds that soft spot in the zone. Or we could go with the flowers being shifted off a of play action and get an open, or finally get an opportunity to see Rashad Bateman be the wide receiver we hope he would turn out to be prior to injuries. We hope so. Hopefully this is the year. And let's not forget, Isaiah Likely wanted to know every position offensively and Project Pat doing what Project Pat does best, surprising everyone with his football talents. I, I like the way, I love the way you think, and that, the way that you put everything gets us even more excited for the season. Ladies and gentlemen, we are literally 10 Sundays away from, from week one. Actually, and for Ravens fans, for us, we even closer than every other NFL team is besides the Chiefs because we playing them. But we 10, 10 Sundays away from week one. But we play Thursday in week one. So we're going to get our game a little bit early. Special shout out to all the team Keep It Clean patrons. If you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Everything down below to support the channel is in the description. Uh, but if you don't want to, that's fine as well. As long as you leave a like on the video, click that thumbs up button. Then we are good in my book this next question came from a long time team keep it clean patron my guy martin and, and martin real quick i appreciate you because you have brought a, a, a widespread of questions um to the channel you brought a widespread of topics and you're very passionate i, I appreciate your passion and i appreciate your honesty um and, and i appreciate you even I, I know a lot of times you've even shared some personal stuff uh, that's happened in, in your life uh, in, in regard, not, sometimes in regards to your question, sometimes not in regards to your question. But I, I just want to let you know that I appreciate you a lot, my friend. Uh, but he said, what do you think about QB wins as a stat? Ooh, oh, oh, I like this one. This is fun. Let me just continue before I answer. He said, I'm a QB wins guy, and I just want to say people who argue against QB wins think that we think it's the only stat when it's not. If you win a lot but have very middling stats, the wins don't offset. Uh, QB wins, to me, are an additive stat rather than the only stat. Like in Lamar's case, even if you took the wins away, his other stats are still great. The wins just add to his already impressive case. Me, football is the ultimate team sport because it's 11 on 11, and you could have 10 players do the right thing. 10 players out of 11 do the right thing. If one messes up, that play is null and void. Snow and void. 
Say, for instance, the offensive line blocks great. The quarterback drops back, throws to the wide receiver. Wide receiver catches it. He running, 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 then fumbles it. That ain't none of the other 10 guys' fault. That's on that wide receiver for fumbling the ball. He fumbles it. The other team gets it. Boom. Play's done. Play's null and void. The play's bad because that wide receiver messed it up. Everybody else did that job right. But you can, and of course, you could pinpoint any single player uh, on offense or defense if they mess up how everything can fall apart. So what I'm saying is football is the ultimate team sport. So I know when you look at it like that, a lot of people say, all right, no, QB wins are not a stat. I disagree. QB wins, in my opinion, they are a stat, depending on the impact that that QB has on your team. QB wins for the Baltimore Ravens, <laughs> they are definitely a stat. Because Lamar Jackson, for every little thing and every big thing that he does, he impacts the game heavy like crazy. He takes the Baltimore Ravens to another level. Because you see who the Baltimore Ravens are with Lamar Jackson. They're a powerhouse team. They could make a lot of stuff happen. They can go crazy. But then you see the Baltimore Ravens without a Lamar Jackson. And to me, that sums it up right there.